Friends, I would like very much to tell you the story of the three nails. It all happened a long time ago in a faraway country. Now these three nails were not like the nails we know so well today. These were not made by machines and were so much larger, they were called spikes. These three nails were born in a tiny shop in the city of Jerusalem and lived in a small wooden box on the very top shelf in the shop. This pleased them no end, for from their lofty perch they could see the crowds that thronged the busy street. Now about the time our story really began, there was a young man creating quite a commotion in that part of the country. It seems he had been going about from city to city, healing the sick and raising the dead, why he had even turned the water into wine. Yes, the three nails had heard quite a bit about this man from conversations in the shop. And being intelligent and not at all like ordinary nails, they had discussed among themselves the question as to what manner of man this could be. Some of the people they had overheard said he was a prophet, while others contended that he performed the miracles through the power of Belzebub. Now, as we said, these three nails were very intelligent, so they agreed they would wait for a chance to see and hear this man before they should say, he is true or he is false, which you must agree was a very honest and fair decision. As the days passed swiftly into months, it became more and more apparent to the three nails that the religious rulers and those in authority were becoming more and more alarmed at the many wonders this man did. In their little box home on the top shelf, the three nails hoped and prayed that this man would pass down the street so they could see him. As they eagerly waited for that day, they began to tell each other how each thought he would look. Tall? No, answered another. I think he is no taller than Joseph, the shopkeeper. Perhaps he is rather stout and jolly, ventured another. No, answered the wisest of the three. From all we have heard, he has no place to live and not near enough to eat. I am sure that he is neither stout nor jolly. Now every year at this time the people observed the feast of the Passover in Jerusalem and the three nails knew there would be the usual crowd with all the excitement of a great holiday. But this year it was so different. There was a tension among the people. The three nails could feel something evil and sinister in many of the faces of those who came into the shop. However, in a few faces, the three nails could discern fear, and on some were traces of a tear. How they wished somebody would buy them so that they might be taken out into the crowd where they could learn what had caused all this unusual excitement. Then it happened. Suddenly, a large, rough hand dipped into the box and grasped the three nails tightly. Then, very swiftly, they were carried out of the shop and toward a hill that stood just outside the city. The three nails shouted with happiness, free, free at last. Now, if fate was kind, perhaps they would see and hear this man called Jesus. Then one of the nails, peeking between two very rough and firm fingers, explained, I know this place. Who would build a house or a barn, for that matter, on Golgotha? The hand slowly opened, and there on the ground lay a huge wooden cross. But it was not the cross that made their little steel heart stand still. No, it was the man who was stretched out upon it, ready for crucifixion. Never in their life at the shop, where all manner of man came and went, had they seen such a man as this. How could you describe all the beauty and humility, the strength and the goodness one could see in this doomed man? No, all the words in the world could never do him justice. 
Surely he must be the Son of God. Then, like a bolt of lightning, the three nails realized why they had been brought here and the awful crime that they were to be a part of. In the last seconds before they were driven into his feet and hands, the three nails spoke to him in the language of nails, which I am sure he understood, and asked him to forgive them for their part in this dreadful deed. And I am just as sure that had you been there and could speak the language of nails, you would have heard him say with a smile, I understand and you are forgiven. And that, my friends, is the story of the three nails.